Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time. This week's topic, guys, is on mega gaps. I've been getting a lot of emails. In fact, probably the most amount of emails I've ever gotten on a single topic. What happened is yesterday, the market gapped up 2.7% and I said, guys, and I put this out there on stock twits, on Twitter, in the chat room, social media, everywhere. I said, guys, the market's gonna drop today. And I said this at 9 a.m., 30 minutes before the market opens. In fact, you can see it on the screen right now. 30 minutes, 28 minutes before the market opens. I said, look for shorts, look for shorts, look for shorts. The market's gonna drop today. And I got tons of emails from people. I got tweets from people. I got private messages on stock tweets from people going, Jared, why do you think the market's gonna drop? Some of these were before the market even opened. Others were after the market had dropped later on because the market did drop. And they said, well, how did you know that the market was gonna drop? And you put it out there 25, 30 minutes before the market opened. And it's not because I'm Nostradamus. It's not because I have a magic crystal ball. None of those things. It's because I use technical analysis, which is what? Using past price action, excuse me, past price action to predict future price movement, okay? So today's lecture is on mega gaps in the market as well as how to trade those mega gaps in the market, okay? And we're gonna go through it systematically and you're gonna see what's really impressive about this week's lecture is at the end or kind of in the middle, maybe 70% of the way through, you're going to see concepts that we've been using in these videos from the past two months all put together in one chart. And that one chart is the five minute chart of the spiders, the S&P 500 from yesterday. Okay, and you're gonna see how everything you've learned from drawing trend lines to market cycle, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, to bottoming tails, topping tails, increased volume, climactics, extended charts, right? Think sell, really think sell, really, really think sell. All of these things are in this week's video, guys. And that is how I de determined yesterday that the spy was going to be a good short 30 minutes before the market opened. And what did we do? We shorted the SPY yesterday right off the open, okay? So this week's lecture is powerful because it's gonna help you predict the future with regard to mega gaps in the market. Another thing you're gonna learn and see in this is that we are in insane times, crazy times. I mean, guys, in the last two years, two years put together, there have been that many, that's zero, okay? Zero, 2% gaps in the market, zero. Do you know how many we've had in the last three months? 11, 11 2% gaps in the last three months. That's how volatile these markets are. So you're seeing a lot of those people out there, gurus and gurus go, oh, I made 50 grand, I made 100 grand. That stuff doesn't last, guys. You need to come back to the middle, all right? Check yourself. You're never this high up, you're never this far down, you're always somewhere in the middle, okay? But this today's lecture is very powerful because it will help you not only learn how to trade mega gaps in the market, but you can apply this to also regular gaps. Now, obviously, with regular gaps, you're gonna need more than one or two percent to be considered a mega gap but again we can discuss that later so this week you're gonna see the last two or three months of all the videos that I've done put together into literally one chart and figured out how and why I thought it was such a good idea to short the spy yesterday also guys I want to talk about one other quick thing all right um, last week I put a slide in there about how three bar plays happen every single day. And I saw a couple comments in the bottom uh, about, oh yeah, it's easy to pick out three bar plays in hindsight. How about in real time? Well, number one, come into the chat room. We trade them almost every day in real time. But this morning, okay, I put out four daily three bar plays before they triggered Three of them didn't trigger and one of them did trigger and that stock symbol is NET, N-E-T. And I put this out there before the market opened. Did I mention before the market opened? At 9.27 in the morning, okay? The entry was $32 with a stop loss at 30.70, so $1.70 on the stop loss. The stock is up $4 right now, $4 up over two to one on your money, about two and a half to one on your money. We usually shoot for 
two to one target. So my point is, is I put this out there on social media. I put it out there in the chat room before it happened. So it was basically a free idea for anybody to take out there. So you can follow me at Scoutmaster on StockTwist if you want some of these ideas. And that's just mainly to prove to some of those few people out there, Jim and some of you others, that these things do, I do call these things way before they happen, every day in the chat room and even on the daily charts, all right? I just wanted to clear the air on that because these happen all the time, no excuses. Just put your scanning hat on and you can find them as well, okay? So also, if you like this video, please click that like button, smash that subscribe button, guys. You can also get a $1.14 day trial to the Live Traders chat room. And what do you get to do in there? You get to watch me trade live every day. You get these educational lectures every day. You can have your trades reviewed. Uh, we go over our morning watch list and our gap list. It's pretty freaking awesome, I'm not gonna lie, all right? so. Let's get to it, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. This week's lecture topic is on mega market gaps and how to trade them. Um, I would say, and, and I've used this comment frequently, like, oh, I've gotten a lot of emails about this or that. But I'm going to say that yesterday... Um, Maybe I got more emails than I've ever gotten before on a single topic in the short period of time. I probably got at least 10 emails literally just on how did you pick or, or know that the market was going to pull back yesterday. And on top of that, I got a ton of stock twits and Twitter and social media comments about how did you predict the market was going to pull back yesterday uh, off the open. And we'll get to that. I'll show you you know, the, the comments I made to the chat room, the comments I made to stock twits, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I thought this would be an appropriate topic um, in terms of how we handle mega gaps. And it's something we've been seeing a lot more of recently, which I'm going to show you also, because mega gaps in general are not a common event. All right. But recently it's it's every other day, pretty much. Um, so before we get to that, though, as always, and this one was a, a tough one, guys. Um, I mentioned this in the chat room. But when will the insanity stop? Um, this week's edition is a little bit, again, one of those I, I wasn't really sure if I should bring this up. Uh, so I just took the headline from it and not really want to get into the story of it because many of you have seen the headline and you know what I'm about to say or who or what I'm about to talk about. But um, some of you saw this on Market Watch and other websites as well. Heartbreaking story of a rookie trader who racked up 700000 in debt. Finance isn't worth losing your life over. And that last three words, four words, losing your life over. Um, so I'm not going to get into the story. If you want to look the story up, uh, you can see this was published on June 15th. Uh, so not that long ago, a couple days ago. And uh, this is just a sad story. Um, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it just because it is a sad story. Um, but it harkens back to, you know, those Don Henley songs in the 80s, that, you know, in a New York minute, everything can change. Um, you you got to take this stuff seriously guys okay uh, money makes people do crazy things good and bad at times but mostly bad and um, you really want to take this business serious so that you don't find yourself in a position where you've lost your life savings overnight or in a couple days or in a week and um, it's unfortunate because i i also and i'm not going to say who it was but i saw a video yesterday a youtuber um and he was giving some reasons, you know, the truth about trading and this and that. And one of the truths he gave about trading, and, and I, this is important for me to talk about. One of the truths he gave about trading is, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty close, is most likely at some point you will blow up a trading account. These are his words. Most likely at some point you will blow up a trading account. Wrong, wrong, and wrong again. You should never... Not ever, ever, and one more ever, never blow up a trading account. If you do, you're an idiot, plain and simple. So this, this is goes, harkens back to what I tell you guys every week. What most, not all, what most of these gurus and furus out there online are teaching you is how to piss away money, how to blow up your account, maybe so they can, I don't know, hook you in further. I'm not sure. But you should never blow up a trading. It should not ever, not even one time, not even a small account. Maybe if you had a hundred bucks, but if you have a three, four, five thousand dollar account, ten thousand, twenty, you should never be blowing up a trading account. 
If you do, it's because you're an idiot. You're stupid. You don't have good money management. Okay. But I just happened to see that YouTube video yesterday, brand new video about the truths about trading. And a truth is you're likely going to blow up a trading account. Bullshit. That's not a truth. Okay. That's somebody who's stupid. All right. So let's move on into this. One more quick thing. Last week, I told you guys three bar plays happen all the time. Well, it's because they do. Um, and then I got a comment from somebody who said, yeah, yeah, that's cute, Jared. That's nice. Uh, hindsight. Anybody can tell us about a three bar play in hindsight. Um, well, obviously, you don't spend much time in the chat room because if you did, we take them in the chat room every day. But I thought I'd bring out net specifically because this was mentioned and you can see it at 627 this morning, which is 927 a.m. New York time. And this is three minutes before the market opened. This is a daily three bar play. So this green bar you're seeing right here obviously wasn't there at 927 in the morning, but this wide range bar and a narrow range bar was, I blew it up over here on the left just so you get a better look at it, wide bar, narrow bar. Um, here are a few daily three bar plays to watch. Some of these are four bar plays, CCXI, AM, MNTA, and NET. Um, just watches tired of people saying they can't find three bar plays. There are a ton of them every day, okay? Um, this is true every day. There are three bar plays every single day. I don't know what to tell you. I, I And yes, three bar plays before they trigger every single day. So um, that's I'm just going to leave it at that. So let's get to the good stuff. All right, here's the good stuff. Trading reliability. This is going to, trust me, it's all going to come back to mega gaps. I promise you, it's all going to come back to mega gaps. So how do we make trades more reliable? It's a rhetorical question because I answer it right below. We try to find multiple concepts converging in an area. All right. This overall concept of multiple concepts is a big concept. It's a lot of concepts, isn't it? All right. So what I mean is every time we go to take a trade, you should be looking for reasons not to take the trade. And if you can't find any or very many, that must mean by definition, there are multiple positive things happening or multiple concepts happening on that chart in a specific area, so much so that you have to take the trade, right? We always talk about pilots and checklists, make sure you put a checklist together. And that checklist is all of the things you wanna see in a trade before you can take it. And that would obviously be multiple concepts happening in an area. Well, this is true for everything. This is true for the market. This is true for core trades on a monthly time frame. It's true for one minute charts. It's true for stocks. It's true for Forex. It doesn't matter. It's just true for everything. Multiple concepts happening in an area. If you don't have multiple concepts or can't find multiple concepts, you probably shouldn't be taking that trade. Well, I'm going to relate the multiple concepts concept to the market today. And at the end of this lecture, I'm going to list all of the things that we tied into this to make the decision on the market, right? When you go through professional trading strategies, it's a systematic approach to trading, right? There's a lot of things you learn through that course. And as you get to the bottom, there's a chapter called putting it all together. Well, today we're going to talk about the market specifically. And at the last slide or two is how we arrived at that point. Right? So we're going to talk about all those things. I'm just going to list how we arrived at that point. And you're going to, you're going to be surprised at just how many concepts that we use to put this idea or this, this together. Okay. So starts with this stock twits and Twitter, and obviously in the chat room as well. Okay. So at 9.02 in the morning, again, I'm on West coast time. So it says 6.02, but it's 9.02. I said, long watches, BA, Lily, blah, 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 nobody cares. Short watches, ZM, and then I said, plus everything on the long list. And some of you maybe thought that was a little bit of a joke, but it wasn't a joke, okay? And then a minute later, one minute later, I wrote, I am looking for a pullback in the market. And now I wanna be clear about this. I am not Nostradamus, okay? I don't have one of those magic eight balls you put on your desk that gives you answers to the future. But this was 27 minutes before the market opened, all right? So looking for a pullback in the market today, SPY and Qs, watch the short side, okay? 6.25 or 9.25, five minutes before the market opens. I like Lily over 155.75, but focus on shorts today. Likely we'll have to find an overextended long idea to short. 
So I think giving all three of these 30 minutes before the market opens is clear where my head was at. This isn't some last minute hoopla and I'm not just giving it to the chat room, I'm putting it on social media. So you're putting your reputation out there to thousands of people saying, no, the market's gonna go lower today, all right? And then ultimately in 9.31, what do we do? We short the SPY. So we put our money where our mouth was, although we didn't make that much money on the SPY, you're still putting your money where your bias is, okay? So that's to just set the tone, all right? Now, what happened after I did this and after the market pulled back, all right, the market did ultimately leave a bottoming tail, but I got a lot of comments, emails, stock twits, Twitter. I just threw two on here because I could put five pages of these on here. Why does a market pull back on a gap up like this? Hey, Jared, I don't understand how you predicted the market was going for a pullback. Could you please explain? I got at least 10 of these on stock twits, more than that on Twitter, and at least 10 emails over it. I mean, I was blown up yesterday on how did you know the market was going to pull back? So I thought, it's a good idea to talk about it today, all right? Especially the day before lecture day, all right? So that's kind of the catalyst for why we're talking about this today. So this is what I consider to be a, a mega gap in the market. Anytime the market gaps up or down more than 1%, all right? Anytime the market gaps up or down more than 1%, and let me preface this, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. That works in most markets. What I mean by most markets is the current environment since March till now, March, April, May, June, four months now, this is not a, quote, normal market. This is a market that's being pumped up with steroids like the chicken you buy at the grocery store, okay? The Fed is just unwavering in their commitment to prop this market up, okay? So normally speaking, and I promise you, as the quote says, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. Every market passes, guys, okay? It, it just does. Nothing lasts forever. So what's going on right now will also will fade away at some point. But mega gaps, I consider anytime the market, that's the QQQ, that's the SPY, that's the IWM, one of those three products, anytime they gap up or down by 1% or more, okay? So why doesn't this apply right now? Well, I just fed into this, right? Because the Fed's pumping trillions of dollars in the market. It's a false reality. This is not the way the market normally reacts, okay? So this is why during COVID, we need more information before we can call this a mega gap. So this is why I'm, I'm leading this back to yesterday, okay? Because you're gonna see here in a second, 1% gaps happen all the time, right, these days, okay? It's not unusual, but it generally outside of COVID-19 is highly unusual to have a one, one and a half percent gap in the market, okay? But right now the Fed, like I said, is just absolutely committed to making sure this market doesn't pull back and they don't care how much money it takes and how much ink it takes and how much money you know to print to do it, all right? So to prove my point to you, in case you think I'm insane, I took the spy over the last two years. Okay, I could have gone further back, but I thought we'd be here a long time if I did. So this chart goes from June 2018 to July 2019. Okay, so just over a year. All right, about a year, give or take. All right. Now, I may have missed one in here. I might have missed one like this little one over here, maybe. But I could only find one gap that was more than 1% in this entire year. One, that's it. Now again, I may have missed one, maybe two, all right? So let's say there were three. Let's just say there were three, even though I could only find one, all right? Only one gap down that was more than 1% in an entire year's period. And then what happened? Well, we had a super wide range red bar right here. It gapped down, went lower early, and then what? It bullied, it actually went in the opposite direction of the gap. So super wide range red bar, gaps down 1.6%, triggers a support area, and then leaves a massive bottoming tail and goes higher for the rest of the day, meaning mega gaps typically go the opposite direction of the gap. I'll repeat this, mega gaps generally move in the opposite direction of the gap. So if a mega gap up, 
the market usually drops. If you have a mega gap down, when the market opens at 9.30, it usually pops back up. Generally speaking, there are exceptions to this from time to time. So in a one-year period, there were zero 2% gaps. Zero. That means none. Okay? Hold on. Let's move from June, July 2018 up to COVID. Up to just call it March, even though it's late February. Let's just call it up to March. So 2019 June up to 2020 February March. I found a 1.5% gap down here. I found a 0.9% gap down here. And I found a 1.7% gap down here. So in another nine month period, I found three. So now we have what? One year plus nine months in a 21 month period. 21 months, we found four mega gaps in almost two years, four of them. So mega gaps don't happen that often in the market. They happen on stocks every day, but in the market, they don't happen. And during that 21 month period, there were zero, zero 2% gaps, none. So starting to see these types of gaps do not happen that often. The market generally does not gap 1% or 2% very often at all. Why am I saying all this? Because we're living in strange times. Since March, these are all of the 1.5% to 2%. I, I, honestly, guys, I didn't even put the 1% gaps in here. There are too many of them. I literally cut it at 2%, even though there is a 1.8%. I couldn't even do all the 1% gaps because there are just too many. So I, I cut it off at 2%, except for this one gap. So what do we have? 11, 11, 2% or more gaps. Now in the last two years put together, there were zero 2% gaps. Two years, zero. In fact, I would be willing to bet you in the last 10 years, since 2009, 11 years, that you could count on one hand how many 2% gaps we've had in the market. You can count them on five fingers how many 2% gaps we've had. The financial crisis in 08, 09, we had a lot of them. Right now, since COVID-19, we've had a lot of them. But between 2009 and coronavirus 2020, okay, we've had maybe three to five of these, maybe, maybe not even five. A 2% gap is massive. And what have we had since then? 11, 11. And I may have missed a couple in here. And here's the kicker. They're not all 2%. I mean, we're looking at 3.9%, 5.1, 6.7, almost three, 3.1, 3 7.43. I mean, these are massive gaps. Now, why am I bringing this up for two reasons? One, if you just started trading in the last four or five months, you might think that this is normal. It's not. And it will go back to the way it was because everything does. All right. So the volatility we have been seeing in the last four months is extraordinary. It's something you see two or three times in a lifetime. All right. 08, 09, we saw it. We're seeing it now. And before 08, 09, I honestly don't remember this kind of volatility. I mean, in the late 90s, we had some big gap ups, but the market was a little different. So this, this is really unusual, okay? So that's why I wrote out there, this market is insane. That was my gap list, because it is insane. A 2% gap is, is off the charts, massive for the market. And that should be proven to you by the fact that there were none of them in the last two years until coronavirus. So we're in different times. We're in different times. Yesterday's gap was 2.7%, okay? So the gap in question that we're referring to was 2.7%. In any timeline, this is a mega gap, okay? In any time frame, this is a mega gap, all right? So let's take a look. We've also seen the, 50, the greatest 50-day rally in the history of the stock market ever. So again, what's the point? Showing you. These are insane times, unusual times. They will not last forever. This is also harkens back a little bit to what? The late 90s when people were, everybody wanted to become a trader. Why? Because they wanted to get rich quick. Well, what's happening now is you're seeing some people extremely aggressively make incredible amounts of money in the market. Why? Because of the insane volatility. They're basically rolling the dice 
and it, they're winning sometimes, but you're also seeing other people losing $700,000. But again, some people you're seeing them make 50 grand on a trade, 200 grand on a trade because of the insanity that's going on. This won't last. Okay, this is not the norm. So don't think that it is. And also don't think that these massive moves are here to stay. They're not. All right. So this is now the part you guys have been waiting for. How in the world did I predict the market pulling back yesterday? All right. So I'm going to start on the 60. I'm going to go down to the 15, even though these charts, I guess, should be flipped. And then we're going to look at the five and then we're going to look at the two. We're going to break it down on four different time frames. Okay. We're going to break it down. So let's start on the right. All right. The SPY, one of the things what we do guys in technical analysis is what we use past price action to predict future price movement, right? That's the whole concept, the whole basis or foundation that technical analysis is laid upon past price action to predict future price movement. So before we even get into the gap, we have to look at what happened before the gap, okay? So, and just to be fair, this 60 minute chart has pre-market data on it, okay? It has pre-market data on it, okay? So when you take a look at the previous day, what did the market do? The SPY is what I'm referring to here. Went from $295 all the way up to about 310 right? It went from 295 to 310. It's a $15 move. Now, I don't know exactly what $15 is on this, but I can, let's just do it real quick. So 15 divided by, what is that? Two, 5% move the previous day. Okay. A 5% move the market made. Now we just got done talking about one, one and a half percent being massive. And even in this environment, that's crazy. 5% is still a lot. Okay. 5% is a big move. So normally speaking, we're not even just talking about the mega gap. Normally speaking, anytime the market goes up 5%, the next day is almost always one of two things. What are those two things, guys? One of two things. What would it be? Anytime the market has a massive move up or down, the following day, what typically happens in the market? One of two things happens. Perfect. You guys are dead on point. The answers I'm getting are inside day, which is narrow range or a pullback. That's exactly correct. You're either usually getting an inside narrow range day where the market doesn't do very much, or you're getting a pullback. And that's without considering the gap yet. This is just considering this previous 5% move. So after such a massive move, you're normally going to get an inside narrow range day or a pullback. But, but what happened? The market didn't just have a 5% move up the previous day. It gapped up another 2.7%. So between the 5% move and the gap, it's nearly 8% in a 24-hour period because the market hadn't even opened yet. So in a 24-hour period, the market was up almost 8%. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. So we're up 16 green bars. Or I know there's one little red bar there. I get it. But for all intents and purposes, from this bottoming tail, we're up 16 bars in a row. Do you think this bar right here is an igniting bar or an ending bar? Well, after 16 bars in a row... Oh, wait. Do you guys remember this slide? Huh. I seem to remember doing a whole lecture on this slide a while ago. So if like three bars is think about selling and kind of five bars is like really think about selling and six bars is like really, really think about selling, then what the heck is 16 bars? So if like six bars is like jump ship, get out, what is 16 bars followed by a massive wide range bar at the end of it? Definitely run. I mean, you're lucky you're up 16 bars and then you get this wide range bar. We're putting the concepts together slowly here, but we're getting there. Here's the 15 minute. And you can see these three 15 minute bars right there. These four are making up that 60 minute wide range bar. So you're saying there's a chance, right? So four, five, six bars a lot. 16 is crazy. All right. 
So that's the, the 60 minute chart. That's the 15 minute chart. Now let's go down. Now remember, keep this in mind. I want to burn this into your head. Why do I want to burn this into your head? Because every single stinking day in the chat room, somebody comes in and mentions a stock that's up eight bars. Hey, Jared, what do you think of XYZ over this price? Well, it's up nine bars on the five. Yeah, but it's strong. Okay, next question, right? I mean, that's just, guys, you have to have rules when you trade. We're rule-based traders. And if a stock is this extended, it's more likely that it's going to pull back than it is going to go higher. All right. Now, you know, parabolic setups, you guys remember these things? I'm showing this to you just to burn it into your head. All right. The more bars it's up, the more likely it's coming back. Okay. Hold on. Let's move forward. Now, now we're on a five minute and a two minute. Okay. We're on a five minute and a two minute. So this again, to be clear, this encompasses pre-market data. This is post-market here and pre-market right here. You can see just about over here, all right, just missing it where my cursor is, the topping tail. That's when the market opened. Now, I gave you a little flash picture a second ago. Guys, what does this five minute with the pre-market look like to you? What does it look like to you? What type of pattern does that look like to you? Give you a second to think about it. What type of pattern does this look like to you? Somebody's saying a cell setup. And then we have the correct answers. It looks like a parabolic or a climactic. It looks like a parabolic or a climactic. Let's go back a slide. I put that slide in there for a quick second just to kind of, you know, tease you along. This one's a little bit more extreme. But this is a parabolic cell setup. Parabolic cell setup. Crazy extended, and this is a one minute chart, went from 52 to 55.50. It's coming back down. Let's go to the market. This is the spy from yesterday. Now, remember, guys, I want to be very clear. This is only today on the five minute chart. Let's go back again to refresh your memory. This is only today on the five minute chart. So that five minute chart is happening after this 60 minute move. Let me repeat it for those of you sleeping and not paying attention. That five minute chart you just saw is happening after all of these 16 bars on the 60 minute chart. It does not even include these 16 bars on the 60 minute chart. So the five minute itself by itself looks climactic. Once you throw in these 16 bars on the 60 minute chart, this is a no brainer short play. Topping tail, far from the moving average if there was on here, wide range bars, big volume in the pre-market here, changing of color bar right there, the red bar. I mean, my goodness, they don't, the setups just, they don't get much better than this. And when did I start putting all this out there? Right around 9 a.m. As you can see, 8.30 is right about here. Why? Because the market was hanging around here. But then right between 8.30 and 9 a.m., this happened. Right? 8.30 and 9 a.m., this happened. And by 9 a.m., we were sitting right here on these two bars, right here. 3.14, 3.15, we're sitting on those bars. And I'm looking at this going, this is ridiculous. 5% move yesterday. We just broke out of this range by like four or five dollars here. We're going to pull back. And then you get the topping tail and then the market's opening five minutes later. <sighs> Please. OK, what are we doing here? We're putting multiple concepts together. Right. And I'm, I'm going to show you what those concepts are. I'm talking about them, but I'm going to lay them out for the lazy people out there that just need everything spelled out for them. OK, we'll get to it in just a second. So now. What happened? The market opened and immediately pulled back. Now, it says right here, aggressive pre-market entry 316 by 317 short. You could. This happened right around 905-ish, 910, somewhere around there. 905 to 910, that happened. So now you can see why I put all of those posts out there right around 9 o'clock, right? You guys remember? All of these posts, 902, 903, 925, because I'm looking at this pre-market chart going, this is insane. The market just has to pull back here, right? So 
Topping tail, you could have aggressively shorted this in the pre-market. If you did, you should have taken a small position because pre-market trading is tough, right? It's tough. Then it drops and the market opens right about here. And I said, you know what? We're just going to short it. One minute into the day, we're just going to short this. We used a little bit of a tighter stop. It dropped, bounced, and dropped again. Guys, this is normal, right? This is normal. We see tons of parabolics that drop, bounce, and then lose their you-know-what. And then I have one more question here. Why do we bounce down here? I mean, we dropped, we bounced slightly, that's normal, and then we just lost it. Completely lost the marbles. 315.50 all the way down to 308. Guys, why did we bounce here? Yeah. To the left, to the left, right? Beyonce's got it down support here and it's not just support here it's what a phrase i use frequently it's extended into support yes exactly so we're already exhausted and then we find ourselves at support and big wide range red bar so we have some igniting bars up here and by the time we get to this red bar it's more like an ending bar and then you get what ending volume Right? So you get the ending volume and the igniting volume. Remember in PTS, we talk about sometimes you can have ending and igniting volume on the same bar. That's what this is. right? So you have the ending volume on the tail and the igniting volume on the top of the bar. So you're getting both here. So what do we just do? Think about this for a second. Five-minute micro chart. Five-minute micro chart. What did we just do? We just put in all four stages, right? We had a stage two uptrend. Then we had what we call a stage two pause that refreshes, a breakout. So we're moving higher. Then we paused and continued the move. And then we had what? A V top stage three with a retest and failure into a stage four downtrend with a V bottom at support back into a stage one to a stage two. Guys, this is every single lecture that I've just talked about in the past four to six weeks. We just put it all in one chart yesterday. We literally just, did we not talk about trend line breaks and retest and failures a couple weeks ago? Did we not just talk about market stages extended into support? bottoming tails, volume. These are all of the things that we have talked about in one chart in real time told to you before it happened because we just combined everything we just learned over the past month into one chart. Exactly. Mic drop. Walk away. We're done. We're just going to end it right here. That's it. And again, to, to show you, this is what happens when you're extended on the downside. So right, we showed you real quick what happens when you're extended on the upside? You pull back, right? Now you look, this is what happens when you're extended on the downside. And that's also the same concept as this chart over here. So we just saw the full market cycle happening, okay? And we talked about it. You guys remember this? And I put all the little quirky little pictures of the Senate and Jim Carrey and all that other stuff. It's the same chart. Here's the full market cycle. V top, drop, bounced, retest, and fails to go higher, and then tanks again. It's all we did. It's all we did. Okay? Now, multiple concepts converging in an area. For those of you that are lazy, I listed them out. Huge move up yesterday or the prior day, 5% in this case, okay? I should probably type that in there. Let's do that real quick. 5% move up, okay? Big gap up today, 2.7% gap up. Shoot, that's not what I wanted to do. That's better. All right, okay? So... We had a huge move up the day before, 5%. Mega gap up on the current day. 
pre-market range expansion on all time frames, i.e. climactic, okay? Pre-market volume spike, pre-market five-minute topping tail, far from the 20-period moving average not shown. You put it all together, and he's, I should say, highly or very likely pullback. That's it. We just took one concept, added it to another concept, added it to another concept, added it to another concept. And all of a sudden, we got six of them converging in the same area, and they're such significant concepts that it makes this a no-brainer short. That 16-bar move on the 60-minute chart, that should have been your first inclination. The market's either going to be narrow range today or pull back, even before you saw the gap. Let me repeat that. The 16 bar move up on the 60 minute chart that we showed earlier, that should have told you, wow, tomorrow is gonna to be a narrow range inside day or a pullback day. And then when you woke up the next day and you saw a 2.7% gap up, you should have sat there and go, holy shit, the market's pulling back today. Like there's a 97% chance, could be 99%, that the market's gonna pull back. And then on top of that, the pre-market chart, we got the range expansion. Then we got the volume. Then we got the topping tail. Then you're far from the moving average. It just lines up really, really nice, right? Nice and neat for you. And what's also cool about it is we got to talk about and, and put together all the concepts we just learned over the past four to six weeks with the full market cycle, stage one, two, three, and four. All right? Nice and neat. So, Pattern boosters as well, all right? Mega gaps, market cycles. These are the concepts. So real quick, I want to go back. We put together these, right? We put together these, these six things. But what you're seeing on the next slide is the things you've been taught over the past month or two. Today, we learned about mega gaps. A couple few weeks, we learned about market cycles, okay? We learned about pre-market charts a couple months ago. We learned about when to think sell. This was a January lecture, by the way. So that's a little bit older, but this really think sell extended charts was a January lecture. Essential patterns for those of you that took professional trading strategies. Climactic charts are an essential pattern. We also learned pattern boosters, which are also in professional trading strategies. Pattern boosters that we saw on this chart are volume, topping tails, wide range ending bar, moving averages. So these are all of the things that you've learned in the lectures or in the course that just happened on yesterday's chart. So when you think about it, no, I'm not Nostradamus. No, I don't have a Google app, Magic 8-Ball app that tells me the future. We just simply put together all the things that we've been talking about and learning over the past couple months into one chart. That's it. Right now, I want to go over one more quick thing and then we're going to end this a little bit shorter this week because I went a little bit longer last week. One of the forgotten things that I mentioned because the market was such a big focus yesterday, but one of the forgotten things that I mentioned yesterday was Lily. You know, I only had one stock on the favorites list yesterday and it was Lily long, right? Here's the favorites list. Lily over 155.75 focus on shorts today. Likely we'll have to find an extent, blah, blah, blah. Why was Lily on the long list? And why was Lily something I would want to even consider going long on in a market that I was pretty sure was going to pull back? Because the gap was so damn good. It was just that good, right? When you take a look at this, what level is this gap? This is the daily chart on the right-hand side here, okay? And this little box, the pink box, is the area I want you to focus on. So this green bar was yesterday's gap. Note, we're gapping over a red bar here, a red bar here, a wide range red bar here, a pivot here, and a pivot here. So we have multiple pivots, multiple red bars, and some of those red bars are wide range red bars. We didn't have a ton of room to go higher, but we had enough room, right? We had about seven or eight dollars. That's enough, okay? So this, between these orange lines here, this is the void right? We gapped over the red bars, over multiple pivots with void. And look at the pre-market chart. Beautiful consolidation. You could actually call it an ascending triangle, right? Flat top, higher lows, bull triangle, ascending triangle, right? This dotted line where my cursor is, dot, 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 right there, dotted line right where my cursor is, that is the market open. 
The reason, in case you're curious, that I put this over 155.75 instead of 155.25 is right before the market opened, right? Right around that time, 9.24, this thing started to move up a little and it was at 155.50. When I wrote this at 9.24, Lily was at 155.50. So I figured, well, we got to put it above 155.50 or nobody will even have an opportunity to see it. So 155.75 is where that came from. It popped, pulled back, and ripped for the rest of the day. Possible entry would have been right off the open. And guess what you're allowed to do on level one gaps, guys? What are you allowed to do per the textbook on level one gaps? Anybody? Anybody been, been going through the course lately? Anybody been doing their homework, paying attention? What are you allowed to do? Thank you, Brian. Brian got the answer right. You're allowed to take it right off the open. If you have a true level one gap, you are allowed to take it literally on a one minute high or right off the open. And in this case, it was easier to justify that simply because it had a beautiful consolidation in the pre-market. This thing ripped, pulled back, had a little buy setup, and then ripped. So this was the only stock yesterday, and you guys can attest to this, Almost never do I only have one stock on the favorites list. Almost every day when I build a favorites list, there's usually three to five stocks on that. And there was only one yesterday. That's how good of a gap Lily was. So yes, we were focused on the market short and that's what we ultimately traded, the market short. But Lily, and that's the only reason I didn't take Lily. My conviction on the market short was so strong, I didn't take Lily long. Now in hindsight, I regret it. The truth is, and you guys know me well, is I don't actually short or buy the Qs or the SPY very often. It's rare that I buy the, the market or short the market. I usually focus on individual stocks and not ETFs for no reason, guys. Don't, don't send me an email, why, why, why? It doesn't matter, all right? So anyway, Lily was a really good play because it was a level one gap and level one gaps are really good in any environment, okay? I wanted to show you this just to blow it up. It's the same chart of Lily, all right? I just put the whole five minute chart on with the pre-market. Okay, same thing. There's the buy area. The stop would be down here. There's the other entry. If you look at the buy setup, I also did this again on the daily chart. I just wanted you to see the daily blown up bigger so you could see the whole daily chart here. That's the range we had to work with, gapping over those red bars, multiple pivots, etc. Okay, so I hope that you guys learned a little bit today that we tied everything in multiple concepts converged okay why is there it is okay it took a second to come up all right and that is how i ultimately made the decision 30 minutes before it happened that i was going to likely short the market or find something to short yesterday because we had all of these things happening and i tell you to be honest it doesn't happen that often i mean in the last two years outside of corona we haven't had a single two percent gap not one, zero of them. So when you see these types of gaps and you get a move like yesterday, man, things start, the picture starts to clear itself up and then you start to see other things. So we started with yesterday, then we get the gap up and then we get the range expansion and then we get the volume and then we get the top. I mean, everything's just starting to work out just perfectly. You have to take that, right? You have to take that. Chris, the void is between the two orange lines, brother. Right there. Between the two orange lines. There's the pivot high. There's the other pivot high. That's your void. All right? So all those concepts came together and allowed me to say this before it ever happened. And it's not because I'm a genius. It's just because... I use technical analysis. I didn't even invent technical analysis, right? It's just we use concepts, past price action to pr predict future price movement. And it comes together and it works. And sometimes it comes together and works nice and neatly like that. All right. So that will do it for this week's lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little bit shorter, but I think maybe just as powerful. So also one other last comment before I end this. You can use these same concepts for stocks as well. The only difference is 2% gaps in stocks happen all the time. Every single day they happen. So the percentage is going to be different, but the concepts aren't. If you see a stock that's up 16 bars in a row on the 16 on the 60 minute chart, 
and then you see a mega gap up the next day. You can use these same concepts. All right. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture. We'll get back at it and do another one next week. Take care, guys. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.